Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will be exploring how to scale in Figma. Have you ever tried scaling a component before and ended up with something like this on the left? Let's jump into Figma and work out why this is happening and how we can resolve this. In Figma, there are four ways to scale and I will demonstrate these with a rectangle. So I'm gonna go here and click on the rectangle tool at the top and just click on the workspace, we have a 100 by 100 pixel rectangle. The first way to scale is with these control handles. So I can click and drag, and I can also hold shift to scale proportionally to the original shape. I can also use these fields in the properties menu. So width, I can make it 500 by just typing 500 and pressing tab to jump to the next field, which is height. I can also make that 500. I can also constrain these proportions by clicking on this button. So now when I type width 400, the height being the same previously automatically jumps to 400 as well. The third way to scale is using the nudge tools. So holding command, I can use the cursor keys, which is up, down, left, right. I can nudge the shape by one. So if I press left and right, it changes the width. And when I press up and down, it changes the height. As you can see, even though the constrained proportions is activated, the nudge tools sort of ignore that. And also when I press command shift cursor keys, it nudges by 10. So left and right nudges the width by 10 and up and down, not just the height by 10. And how do we know this? So before the nudge amount was hidden here under file, and there was a nudge amount properties here, but now it's gone. But we can find it through the, the quick search. So pressing command forward slash, we have the quick command menu pop up and we can just type in nudge amount. I'm just going to type in nudge and then click on this tool here. And we can see small nudge by default is at one and big nudge by default is at 10. So to reiterate, small nudge is command cursor keys and big nudge is command shift cursor keys. The final way to scale, which I think is the most important way to learn, um, but you won't be using this most of the time anyway, but it's good to know that there is actually a scale tool under the move tools. So in the toolbar menu, if I click under move tools and just click on the drop down, we see scale with a shortcut K. So you know you're in scale when you're over the control handles, you see um, a double arrow. So right now it looks like it's doing the same thing, but this scale tool has a lot of purpose when scaling other objects such as text, strokes, and auto layout. One thing to note is this tool is in blue, which means when you've selected that tool, it stays on the scale tool until you change it back. Um, so as a good practice, after you've scaled something, just change it back to move with the shortcut V or you can just click here like I did um, in this drop down menu to make sure that you stop scaling your objects in that scale tool way. And now we will look at what the scale tool actually does. So to demonstrate the power of the scale tool, we'll be looking at my Mochi website mockup. And for whatever reason, maybe I want to present this card in an A4 format. So, I would copy and paste this first to preserve this design. And I also have a frame to my left, which is the size of an A4 piece of paper. So we have 297 by 210. So the first thing I would do when shrinking a frame is to make sure that all my elements have scale scale as their constraints. So for this image, for example, I've set it to be scale, scale. 
I'm going to check each element. So scale, scale for my dark button, scale, scale for my light button, my text, I have scale, scale. And also for my order layout, I have hug contents. So rather than hugging the contents, which is automatically sizes the order layout, depending on the outermost constraints of my content, I can just change the size to be fixed, which will then unlock the scale function. So fixed scale, fixed scale. So now I can drag my frame into this paper frame. And the reason why it's not cropping it is because the white frame has clip content turned off. So I'm just going to move this card. Oops, I'm going to move this card into the corner by just clicking and dragging. And my first instinct will, will be now, now that I've set all my components inside the frame to be scale scale, I can just click and drag this control handle, holding down shift to keep the proportions and it should keep this to be the same size. I'm going to zoom in and you can see what happened. So the picture scaled proportionally, but nothing else really did. So my text became four lines, the text on the bottom left that is. My secondary button, which is the button below, the stroke retained its thickness, so it's still, it looks really thick now. And also the text in my button got expanded. You can also see this order layout didn't really do anything with even this line jumping out of the frame. So how do we work around this? We're just going to zoom back out. I'm just going to go undo with Command Z. So instead of using the move tool, which has these single arrow heads to indicate the move tool, I'm just going to go, go into the scale tool with the shortcut K. And now we have this double arrow head. And now when I click and drag, holding down shift to constrain the proportions, as you can see, it scaled everything perfectly. So the power of the scale tool ensures that you keep the proportions of everything. So let me just jump back to the move tool. But there are some downsides with doing this, and we will explore it for these three problematic components that we've indicated before. So the three are the text, the stroke, and order layouts. Firstly, we're going to look at text and how scaling affects text. So in Illustrator, there are two types of text, area type and point type. Whereas in Figma, we only have area type. So area type just means we create an area for the type to exist. So when I click and drag, all I'm doing is growing the area for the text to exist. So if I keep writing lines of text, it will just keep flowing along to fit within this box. So if I overlap this border with the word sets, it just jumps to the next line. We can also control this here. We have these three buttons within our properties. We have fixed sized, we have auto height. By clicking that, it just shrinks the area to fit the two lines of text that we have. And these heights are dictated by this one, which is the line height in the properties. Currently it's set to auto, which just means the creator of the typeface has chosen these line heights for us. And auto width just brings all your text into the one line and it just constrains the area to wrap around your text. So if you actually do want to scale your text, this is where the scale tool is handy. I'm gonna press scale, which is also the shortcut K. So now when I scale my text, what actually happens? You can actually see the size of my text has actually changed. So now it's 22.29. And obviously you can just change it to whatever you want. So if you have a component with text, 
and you want to scale the whole component and the text as well, you can do that. But just know that you will end up with a weird text size, which I don't know if that is exactly what you want to do. But if you want to do it for some presentation reason, definitely just use the scale tool. And like I said, always jump back to the move tool when you're done. The second component we're going to look at is stroke or components with stroke. So we have this button with a blackish stroke of size thickness one. And if we control the shape with these control handles, as you can see, the button shape changes, but the stroke is always one. And this is how we want Figma to work because if we want to change our button size, we don't want this number to constantly change. I'm just going to press Command Z to go back to the original shape. However, if you do, for whatever reason, want to grow this shape with the stroke size and the text size, so like I did before, you can just go here in the Move Tools, Scale, Shortcut K, and you can just scale your button like that. So as you can see, the text has changed. It has this funky text size now, which is 30.38. And also our stroke size has changed. So stroke 1.69. And remembering to go back to the move tool. The final component I want to look at is the auto layer component. So I'm going to click on this frame and you can see that it has the auto layer turned on which to reiterate auto layout is just a grouping of components where you control the spacing between and also the padding. So when I click and drag this control handle, similarly to the area type text, it doesn't really change anything. And I can even go and overlap my components and it doesn't actually change anything. So why would you, change the frame in the first place. Maybe you want to use some neat tricks with the line tool. But most of the time you just want it to hug the contents. So we can go back to hug con contents um, in the res resizing panel within our properties. And if I wanted to scale, go back to the scale tool. I click on frame and using the scale tool. Now I can scale my auto layer. And as you can see, it also scales my spacing. So before I had spacing, which is why it's scaling that spacing down, but my padding was always zero. So it just retained its zero property. One of the downsides of using the scale tool is that there's no real easy way to scale a component to a very specific size. So back into my scale tool, let's say for frame 118, I want it to make it that paper size. So I want to make the height 210. One might think that editing the height in the properties menu while you have the scale tool activated will do that. So by pressing the height field, I'm just going to type in 210, enter. As you can see, it scaled it down as if you were in the move tool. So to work around this, there are two ways. If you have the desktop version of Figma, you can download these plugins. So there's two that I've tested that work really well, which is scale or proportional scale. So for example, if I use proportional scale, I can just type in 210 within this pop-up, scale to height, and it just does that for me, which is very easy to do. However, a faster workaround, because I don't really like these pesky plugins unless they really add value to my workflow, I can just create a frame or rectangle or whatever shape you want to create next to your component. So for example, I have this leftover frame, which is 210 in height. I can just use that as a guide for this constraining scale. So I'm just going to click and drag this control handle holding down shift to constrain my scale. And when I reach that line, I will see a red line, which indicates that my, my point of my cursor matches that frame. 
which just means I've successfully scaled it down to that 210. And that's sort of like a cheat way to scale down components to a specific size, especially if you're in the Figma browser that doesn't have access to these plugins. The final thing I want to talk about is whether we want to use the scale tool at all and whether we could use something else. The reason being is when I duplicated this card and scaled it down to that A4 size, what I actually did was double the amount of layers in my file because now I have two of each layer. Alternatively, we can actually just make an image and use that as our presentation tool. And the way that we do that is by using the shortcut Command Shift C. As you can see, copied as PNG. And now when I go Command V, I have this nice image that I can just scale down. No worries about the layers. And there we have it, ready to go, just as a simple single image. And if you want to remember that shortcut, you can also go command forward slash and just type in copy. And there we have that tool, copy as PNG, if you don't want to remember the shortcut that is. Not going to lie, it actually took me a while to find the scale tool. But now that you know where the scale tool is and what it does, hopefully you can use it wisely to help assist you in your workflow, in your projects. That's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.